Welcome to the Red Cloud Research Roundup. It's October 31st. This week, Tesla announced the company slashed prices of its Model 3 and Model Y vehicles in China, an attempt to partly reverse some of the price increases the company was forced to carry out earlier this year, on the back of rising material costs. Within the last week, the US even deployed a $3 billion boost to domestic output of EV batteries and the minerals used to make them. This week, we're joined by Red Cloud Securities mining analyst Kobe Kushner to talk about how these economic decisions are impacting the price of lithium. Plus, Taylor Combaluzier and Timothy Lee are coming on to discuss EV nickel and Titan Minerals drill results. Taylor, why don't you kick us off? Hello, and thank you for the warm welcome. This week, I'll be speaking about EV Nickel. We do not currently rate this stock. EV Nickel is a Red Cloud banking client. This is a company we've mentioned before on the podcast, and essentially all of its results to date have been from smaller scale, high grade nickel mineralized zones, such as the W4 zone. But last week, EV Nickel reported the first results from its drilling at the Carlang area, which confirmed the potential for a large scale, lower grade nickel target. Highlight results included 0.25% nickel over 297 meters from one hole and another that returned 0.22% nickel over 201 meters. The drilled portion of the Carlang A zone comprises only 1.4 kilometers of the over 10 kilometer long trend of prospective dinitic units at the Carlang area. The interpreted width of the A zone is 400 to 500 meters and drilling was completed to 250 meters vertical depth though multiple holes bottomed in the dinitic body, suggesting it could remain open at depth. Our preliminary estimates suggest significant potential at the Carlang A zone, which we calculate could potentially contain up to 2.3 billion pounds of nickel at a grade of approximately 0.22%, assuming the pending assays are as favorable as those in this initial batch. For comparison, we'd note that the Crawford deposit comprises total resources of approximately 5 billion pounds of nickel at 0.24%. We were also recently on a site visit when drilling was occurring at Carlang and would note that there are numerous outcrops in the target area and overburden is quite minimal, typically less than 8 meters. We'd also mention the Shaw Dome project is road accessible and just south of Timmins, all characteristics that make the project favorable for a potential future open pit development scenario. Although it is still early days, should EV Nickel continue to have success drilling the Carlang trend along with others at the Shaw Dome project, we believe the company could become a major player when it comes to class one nickel, which is a critical raw material for the production of EV batteries. Kobe, over to you. Thanks for chatting about EV nickel, Taylor. Keeping up with the EV theme, I wanted to discuss a recent move by EV giant Tesla. Tesla cut the price of some of its cars in China. Starting price for the Model 3 was cut by 5% and the Model Y was cut by about 9%. We thought that this was interesting, because one question we get is whether rising lithium prices will make electric vehicles significantly more expensive and hinder the looming EV revolution. Thus far in this lithium rally, EV prices have been relatively inelastic to lithium prices, and this move by Tesla is evidence of that. We did some back-of-the-envelope math, and we estimate that the value of lithium in a Model 3 can make up anywhere between 1-8% to of its price. Not insignificant but we can't look at lithium prices in isolation. Tesla CEO Elon Musk warned in March that the company is seeing cost inflation pressures in raw materials. Since then, we've seen prices of other battery metals come down. Nickel, another battery metal, is down over 30% since then. Raw materials aside, there's still other factors at play. For one, the manufacturing costs have come down considerably in recent years, and then there's the whole supply-demand equation. Competition between EV automakers is well heated. Last quarter, Chinese EV automaker, BYD, surpassed Tesla in unit sales by roughly 200,000. So perhaps the move for Tesla cutting prices is to maintain or improve demand in China, where competition is more fierce along with the backdrop of a potential recession. Bottom line, we do not think high lithium prices will hinder demand for EVs. We also don't think lithium will be engineered out of EV batteries anytime soon. Compared to other metals, it's the one metal that seems to be used in all dominant EV battery chemistries. And there's a reason for that. It's the lightest metal on the periodic table. It allows for more battery life in a lighter package. 
As we've stated before, we think the most likely thing that would potentially cause a major lithium price correction is the introduction of new supply, which we have yet to see. While on the topic of lithium, we wanted to talk about some hard rock lithium companies that we watch. We spoke about Winsome Resources a couple weeks back, that's WR1 on the ASX. Winsome provided an update on its ongoing drill programs taking place at its Canset and Adena projects in Quebec. At Adena, the company poked its first holes into the newly discovered Jamar pegmatite. The company had intersected some wide widths of pegmatite here. Hole 5 in particular hit an 80 meter interval of pegmatite from 3 meters. At about 105 meters, it hit another 72.5 meters of pegmatite. Now, pegmatite is the host rock for lithium. The visual results do look encouraging, but we do think we ought to wait for assay results to paint a clearer picture. That being said, we do know that these pegmatites are enriched in lithium, as evidenced by the high-grade rock chip samples that we spoke about two podcast episodes ago. Bigger picture, the Jamar pegmatite is located 1.2 kilometers from the previously drilled Adena showing. Adena itself is also the secondary asset for Winsome, with its flagship being the nearby Canset project, where Maiden Resources due in the new year. The next lithium company to discuss is Latin Resources. That's LRS on the ASX. There's several assets in this diversified explorer, but today we'll focus on its flagship Salinas Lithium project in Brazil. There's several identified pegmatites here. The key target is the Kalina prospect, which has been the focus of most exploration thus far. It's represented by a swarm of east shallow dipping pegmatites that remain open in all directions. The company has been aggressively drilling this target throughout the year, and there's been some good hits thus far, such as 1.5% lithium oxide over 17.4 meters, and 1.2% lithium oxide over 21 meters. Latin is expecting a maiden resource on the Kalina prospect by year end. We think the company is on track to do so, given that resource definition drilling is already completed. Looking beyond the resource footprint, however, plenty of exploration potential remains. Notably, the Kalina West prospect, about 500 meters to the west, recently returned some very encouraging drill results, with headline intercept being 1.32% lithium oxide over 18.71 meters. I also want to touch on the real estate here. This project has the right infrastructure in place, it's road accessible, and it's near hydroelectric power. It's also near the city of Salinas, which is what the project is named after. Importantly, it's about 50 kilometers northwest of Sigma Lithium's flagship asset. So we cover Sigma Lithium, that's SGML on the TSX Venture, with a buy rating and 37.25 target price. Sigma owns 100% of the Grotto de Sorello Lithium Hard Rock project in Brazil. This is a construction phase company with a large scale battery grade lithium concentrate production commissioning due later this year or in early 2023. Phase one is due to produce 270,000 tons a year, while phase two is set to produce an additional 261,000 tons a year for total LCE production of 72.2 thousand tons. Combined phases one and two provide robust economics with an after-tax NPV of US dollars 5.1 billion, after-tax IRR of 589%, and a payback period of only three months. Costs are expected to rank second lowest in the world, partly because this is top quality lithium. At a grade of over 1.5% Li2O, the mine would rank third highest in the world. Low iron and mica contents also rank second lowest in the world for each. A phase 3 PEA is pending that would add further to its long-term production goals by bringing in another 4 deposits to the 5 existing deposits in the current mine plan. The company has a tight share structure, commercial offtakes in hand, clean balance sheet, and supportive shareholders. We believe it can fully fund current construction and that phase 2 can potentially be self-funded. That's enough about lithium. Tim, on to you. Thank you, Kobe. This week I will talk about Titan Minerals, that's TTM on the ASX. We do not currently rate Titan's shares. Titan gave an update on drilling at its Linderos project in southern Ecuador. Linderos hosts multiple targets, including a large porphyry copper target and epithermal gold vein targets. 
The company has completed 14 drill holes on the Meseta target, which hosts gold-bearing veins that have been the site of artisanal mining activities. The holes, which average only 90 meters deep, encountered multiple parallel sulfide-rich veins with characteristics typical of a high-sulfidation epithermal system. As well, the company has completed four diamond drill holes at the Copper Ridge Porphyry target. These longer holes, averaging 500 meters, all encountered wide intervals of porphyry-style disseminated and vein-hosted sulfide mineralization from surface. Textures indicate multiple generations of mineralization, with a later copper-gold event overprinting the older copper-moly mineralization. We believe the visual observations from this maiden drill program are encouraging. Assays remain pending, with initial results anticipated in mid-November. Two more holes are planned for Copper Ridge in the current program, with four more holes planned for Masetta. Thanks for listening to the Red Cloud Research Roundup podcast. We hope you enjoyed the dive into recent notable mining news. Remember, you can join us every Monday for new episodes. And as always, you can head over to redcloudsecurities.com for full disclosures and to sign up to our email list. That's it for this episode, and see you next time.